From a bird's eye view, the Chernobyl exclusion zone resembles a huge elongated patch with the Chernobyl nuclear power plant at its center. The accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant took place on April 26, 1986. Scientists estimate that about 4% of the radioactive fuel fell out of the destroyed fourth nuclear reactor. That is almost 380 million curies, 400 times more than the atomic bomb that exploded in Hiroshima, Japan. Such heavy radioactive contamination of the environment made it impossible for people to live on the 5,000 square kilometers surrounding the nuclear plant. This vast area is highly contaminated with radioactive elements. It stretches from west to east and is called the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. 35 years after the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear plant, we traveled to the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. This asphalt road leads to the town of Pripyat. From the road bridge, we have a view of the Chernobyl nuclear plant in front of us. On the other side of the bridge, we can see the abandoned infrastructure and railway tracks of Janov Station. The village and the Janov Railway Station were hit by a jet of intense radioactive contamination. Exposure dose levels in April 1986 were in the hundreds of millirentgens per hour. All inhabitants were evacuated on April 27, 1986. Nowadays, there are remains of the abandoned settlement, which have not had time to be buried. Nearby is a small island of forest that perished from radiation. Among the trees lie rusted locomotives and wagons. There are radioactive burial grounds and accumulation of different civil and military special equipment around. This machinery used to do various jobs to bury the radioactive forest and clear the area around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It is a dangerous and radionuclide contaminated area, a prime example of the consequences of nuclear disasters. When people can't turn back time and return to their former place of residence, we see that nature wins out in the end. It takes over and fills in the space that people have left behind. Today, in the 10 kilometer zone around the nuclear plant, it is almost impossible to find surviving village houses. All the buildings and dwellings of these settlements have been very heavily contaminated and eliminated by complete burial. For kilometers from the destroyed reactor of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant are the burial grounds of the former village of Kopachi. Almost all of the buildings in the village have been destroyed and buried underground. Only the building of the kindergarten remained untouched. It was not buried in time. Now, it's one of the tourist trails in Chernobyl. Over 35 years, the radiation situation in the buried settlement has improved considerably. The level of irradiation here 
has decreased hundreds and even thousands of times. But despite this, the territory of Kopachi village is still dangerous and unfit for human life. But, in spite of severe radiation contamination and very high levels of radiation, scientists and biologists have not been able to detect any mutations in insects and plants. The village of Kopachi is one of the few settlements in the Chernobyl zone that have been decontaminated. To the right of us are the burial grounds, burial sites of former buildings and structures of this settlement. The radiation background in the area of the fence, clearly this part of the fence, has not been decontaminated, is more than 200 micro Rentgen per hour. Forming, evolving, and evolving over millions of years, living organisms have developed sophisticated survival strategies and adapted to the effects of radiation. A female wasp has established a nest near an old wooden radioactive fence. This fence has not been buried and has not been decontaminated, so it is heavily contaminated with radionuclides. The wood from the fence is an excellent building material for a wasp colony. Soon, the larvae laid by the female will produce worker wasps. They will help the female to further build and develop her colony. The number of wasps in the nest will increase considerably from a few dozen to a few hundred. As we can see, there is typical vegetation cover here, there is no disturbance. We see the same living organisms, plants and insects that live outside the Chernobyl zone. No mutations and anomalies radiation does not bring to the living environment. Natural processes are running their course here, despite the fact that we are located in the radioactive zone, almost in the epicenter of the radiation disaster. It's only three kilometers from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. After the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, all residential houses and buildings in Kopachi village were destroyed and buried in special burial grounds. All residents were evacuated to different regions of Ukraine. Now, only their graves, small hills, and signs warning of the radioactive danger remain in place of the former houses. In the place of each green hill and warning sign, someone's house is buried. And even the lush greenery cannot hide the wounds of the buried village. On the outskirts of the village of Kopachi, there is an abandoned machine tractor station. The territory of this base is also very radioactive. There is old, rusty agricultural machinery scattered everywhere. The whole area, ruined buildings, and rusty machinery are contaminated with radioactive isotopes of uranium, plutonium, americium, iodine-131, cesium-137, strontium-90, tellurium. Some radionuclides have short half-lives. For example, iodine-131 is a radioactive isotope with a half-life of 8 days and a complete decay of 80 days. The isotope cesium-137 and strontium-90 have half-lives of 30 years and complete decay of 300 years.
But such isotopes as americium-241 has half-life of 400 years. And uranium-238 has a half-life of 4 billion years. At the moment, radiation contamination is very high, so people do not live in these areas. It may take, hundreds or even thousands of years, before these radioactive areas, are suitable for human habitation. Subscribe to our channel, we have many more interesting, travel stories to tell.